Welcome to Midpoint, OCC's midweek podcast aimed at helping you connect with last week's message and prepare you for next week's sermon. Let's dive in. I think we should start. Okay. I'm going to do it. Hello and welcome to Midpoint, your midweek connection to Orchards Community Church. Last week was special for us here at the church. We had our family weekend, so Wesley and Brenton kind of talked us through some elements of the Passover. And they gave specific uh, emphasis to areas of the bitter root and leaven. If you were here, that was quite a bit of fun. But that was a departure from the way we normally kind of just walk chapter by chapter, verse by verse through a book in the Bible. So kind of hit that in a couple ways for me. What's the motivation behind doing this special family service? We're trying to do that, I think, every month that has five Sundays. Mm -hmm. So quarterly we're doing that. Kind of what's the motivation behind that? And what's the motivation for departing from where we are in Scripture, stopping from the book of Ruth, and saying, hey, we're going to go a different direction for this family Sunday. Either one of you want to tackle that? Sure. Sure. So, I mean, there, there's always, there's part of it that in ministry, it's really easy to, and, and, and we deal with it all the time, so it's easy for us to know, but uh, to silo out ministries um, where youth groups kind of starts to do its thing and children starts to do its thing and the adult services do its thing. And, and before you know it, they're all doing their own things sure. and, and nobody knows what's going on. Some of it's to just uh, intentionally battle that. Um, like the divisions in the church. Is what yeah. You're, yeah. And, and, and I don't even think there's necessarily anything malicious or evil about those things, but it's, it's just a problem that just, unfortunately, because we're human and, we get in grooves and, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, kids stay where they stay. Yeah, adults go where they go, and then afterwards we meet up. And there is an easiness to it, mm-hmm. um, but that's a that's just a natural thing that that unfortunately comes out of that. And so some of it is to battle battle that the the siloing of of ministries. But another part of it is 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 just to give us an opportunity. And I mentioned this a little bit in the service, but just giving us an opportunity, we can provide. Um, the ability to families and, and the church body, we can we can hand out pamphlets and send emails all day long about like, hey, this is what your your life should look like when you leave here. Um, but oftentimes we don't create opportunities for people to do that, and so this is an, a, a way of us creating an opportunity for us to come alongside each other um, to be able to do these things together in the hopes that it eventually reproduces itself outside of services, mm-hmm. um, that families can pray together and, and spend time together and, and the church body do that as well. It's an opportunity for us to, to create, um, hopefully even just small, um, habits, um, small habits that can pr- reproduce themselves when the church body leaves here. Yeah. I think it's also really cool that you can, you know, you have kids, that are worshiping and kids worshiping, I think looks different than adults worshiping uh, just because they're different phases of life. And so to have kids through, you know, high school, junior high, whatever, all the way through college and then to uh, adults and then, you know, elderly adults um, to have those different people worshiping so that kids see that this is a lifestyle, that it's not just, this is just what we do on Sunday. It's like, oh no, I, I see that person and they love Jesus, and and they're you know a little bit more seasoned or less seasoned than I, mm-hmm. and so it kind of inspires other people to see like no this is a this is a life choice mm-hmm. that we are giving our lives to Jesus, not just our Sunday to Jesus. Yeah, and it's kind of a shame if we don't bring everybody together even sometimes because, I mean this this oftentimes is the only place that that we get to worship in this way, mm-hmm. and so to not give a person the opportunity to to share that with a younger person. Uh, it's kind of a shame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I've heard you, Wesley, share this many times before because I know this is part of your heart. Hey, it's not just that kids are coming to church. It's that they're learning why they come to a church service and they're doing those things outside of the church building. And so I, I know your heart is really to try and, and integrate that. So that's really sweet. But I, I think one of the things just for me is such a great idea to do because one of my huge pet peeves in the church is you see the kid growing up in the church or the Mm -hmm. student ministries person, and they go, well, I don't like to go to big church yeah, Mm -hmm. because they've never felt like they were part of big church. And this gives them a chance. I know it's only four times a year or whatever, but we're trying to help them see, hey, there's a lot of value to being here together as a family and learning these things and the importance of these things. So, yeah. 
kudos to you guys for doing it. It's awesome. Yeah, and kudos to the church body for for being so welcoming to this. Yeah. I mean, welcoming really to been. the to to the new faces in in the services and and um, the new songs, the, yeah, and new different structure structures, yeah, and 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 being participants and uh, yeah, doing silly stuff on stage and off stage. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I'm not that funny, but thanks for laughing. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, there's a, a lot of joy in seeing a body embrace that. So, again, this is something I really feel God's leading us to do. We'll continue doing it. Speak to this just a little bit because I, I know you ended up here in the Passover, you said, because that's where you were as you were working through the regular children's kind of teaching schedule. And so we took this break in Ruth to do that. I know some of the other weeks we haven't had as as clear a tie-in maybe. But, what are you thinking about? What's motivating you guys when you're like, hey, what passage are we going to spend time in? Where are we going to dig deep? Because you're, you're already thinking about next Family Sunday coming up in January, I'm sure. Yeah. How's God leading you to pick the, the place you're going to land? I'm going to take this one. <laughs> so we were talking about it in, in my office, like, hey, what do you want to do? What do we want to talk about? And th- this week was actually the Red Sea, right? Mm-hmm. And we were like, oh, that'd be kind of fun. And then again, telling on Wesley, he you were very much like, why don't we talk about Passover? Because everybody skips over it. Like it's just not something. It's not a fun story. It's kind of a dark story. Mm-hmm. And so you were like, let's not skip over it because this can be a great way to share the gospel with kids and adults alike. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a um, something that that I see in children's a lot, and and I understand it. Um, but but there's this this balance of of are we trying to protect kids from the message, um, or we, are we trying to justify God? And unfortunately, I think it, it lands on the latter yeah. the latter one quite often, and and that's that's the 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 hard part about it. But there is just such a clear um, Christ connection uh, in the Passover that that I think it's it's worth worth telling. And, and it's a great example of God being who he says he is and doing what he said he's going to do. Mm-hmm. Do you ever have, this is a little off topic, I guess, maybe if we can bring it back around, but do you struggle with that sometimes in children's ministry? How do you deal with tension from biblical passages that are, when you know the whole story, you would have to say, hey, there's going to be questions about it. God did what? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You think of the, the story of the Red Sea, and, and it's fantastic for the people who made it through. It's not, not as pleasant not for as the people who drowned. <laughs> for the folks who yeah. drowned. The story of Noah and the ark, it's great for Shem and Ham and Japheth and family mm-hmm. on the boat, but the people are on the bottom pound and let me in. <laughs> what is this water coming down? That, that's not an easy kid story. So where do you draw that line? I mean, I've never seen a children's Bible that has... The story of the people being, yeah, <laughs> being yeah. drowned. So, so how do you address that? Yeah, I'm not going to say that that I or or we are successful at that <laughs> at that all all the time. And and sometimes, I mean, truthfully, it's like, man, I don't even I don't even know if I want to go there. <laughs> um, you know, and, and and sometimes that's part of it. But some of it is is being courageous in in that the Holy Spirit is working and and um, the Holy Spirit doesn't just work in adults, works in kids too. Of course. Um, and I, I think there's a, there's a part of their, um, part of it's how we present it. I mean, when you read text versus if we were going to watch a movie about it, um, th- those are, those are very different. Th- thankfully in, in, in kids, a lot of times their own innocence will protect them to some degree. Like their mind isn't going to go beyond, um, where their innocence is at. And so sometimes that's, that's true. That's helpful. Um, sometimes that's helpful. Uh, but I think the danger in, uh, I tend to lean towards trying to pursue some of those stories. Uh, and again, maybe it's sometimes more than I should, but, but those stories oftentimes are the best ones to portray how good God is, mm-hmm. how good he is and how far we are from it. Um, th- oftentimes those are, th- are the, um, you know, the story of Jonah is a prime example of one. I have never seen a children's book that talks about how Jonah and ends. Yeah. yeah, I've never seen one. No, most of them leave that part out. Yeah, well, all of them. Leave all of them. All yeah. of them leave it out. <laughs> yeah, but I, honestly, that's the most relatable part of the story. Um, <laughs> and when Jonah goes and perches up there and goes, "Come on, guys, <laughs> wipe them out, yeah, yeah. <laughs> set them on fire." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I mean it's it's a it's a dark thing, but that that's the reflection of of our our hearts a lot of times, 
And so I think I think that is important. And I think there's the when we try to justify who God is, we diminish his glory a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, I think that's a danger. My, um, we have a, a silly children's book that we read and, and becoming a parent has changed my views on some of this as well. Just the, the awareness of, of my own son, um, is mind boggling, but we read this story about Idaho and, uh, it like says good night to all the like state and national parks in Idaho. Um, it's just kind of a silly book. And there's one where it says goodnight, I think, to the Discovery Center of Idaho. And in the picture, there's a picture of like a fossilized T-Rex and then a bunch of kids standing around. And Andre always jokes, the T-Rex is going to eat all the kids. And he giggles and laughs and giggles and laughs. But he, if he saw a video of that, <laughs> yeah. I think he would be haunted. Yes. Yeah. Um, but, but his mind just doesn't doesn't go there. Yeah. And I don't have to entertain that that much. Yeah. I just don't have to go, go further than that. Um, but he got that concept from somewhere. Like I didn't teach him that no. things eat other things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some of that probably points to our sin nature, unfortunately a little bit. Um, but try not to sell kids short on, on the things that they understand just because we don't want to go there too is a dangerous path. Well, and, and there are concepts in the Bible that require us to be able to, to process at whatever age appropriate level we're going to process. But even, you know, we, and we talked about this a couple weeks ago with Ruth, just because of the ma- the mature mm-hmm. subject matter uh, regarding the sensuality, sexuality of yeah. that situation, but I mean, let's be honest, genocide's a pretty mature subject matter, and yeah. it's going to be hard to read the Bible <laughs> and not see that there are times when God calls nations to be eradicated mm-hmm. yeah. because of the influence they would have on future generations, mm-hmm. and you got to. Really lean in on Isaiah and go, okay, God, your ways are not my ways. Yeah. <laughs> your thoughts are higher than my thoughts because I don't know that I see that being my first choice. Yeah, this is not an easy thing to talk about. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and so how do you talk about that in children's church? Yeah. I get it. Tough, yeah. tough questions. Yeah, and there's there's another side to that, too. I mean, even even you look at, like, the the Holocaust where it's like, okay, this this genocide is, is, is evil men um, going about this. And I think a question that often comes from that is like, oh, well, where where was God's justice in that? Why didn't course, God's justice yeah. come sooner? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and wrestling with our place in that in a fallen world and God's sovereignty is a good conversation to have. I, again, I, I think the question there, and it's so sweet to see your heart for kids developing correctly, mm-hmm. is when do you have that conversation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and honestly, you want to trust parents with that most of the time. You don't want to be the the one leading into that conversation, but we can be a nice compliment to the way those parents are trying to point kids to Christ. So. Yeah. Well, and this is why I felt really, really confident telling everybody on stage, like you can leave your kids yes. with Wesley because, I mean, to really struggle with this kind of stuff, it, like clearly you've thought about this. <laughs> and this is not just, uh, well, I mean, the Bible is kind of awkward and we're just going <laughs> to talk about Jonah and the fish. We're Let's not press gonna talk forward. about anything yeah. else. Mm-hmm. Like you've, you've thought about this and it's it's important to you to make sure that you're not – you know, selling kids short on biblical truth, but also I think more importantly, not selling God short or trying to, like you said, justify God, yeah. but just saying, hey, here's where God, here's what God did. And, and look at what we can see the beauty of who God is through this story, even though it's kind of messy. Mm-hmm. So I think that's great. So I leave my kids with you. There you go. <laughs> And if my kids were younger and would enjoy it, oh, my kids like you now. So this is yeah. good. Yeah. And actually, they were. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. <laughs> this is true, yeah, because my kids were and, with and you. I was, and I, well, I mean, I was a volunteer at that time, but yeah. I mean. So well, the moral of the story is I'm old. Thank you. That's wonderful. <laughs> Let's move forward then. <laughs> I'm aging at the same speed. <laughs> Let me ask this, because this is a fun question every week when I get it, uh, teaching through a passage. You obviously couldn't have covered everything that you were going to try and cover and you had less time even than we normally devote to a teaching uh, portion of the sermon, what did you have to leave out? What what were the things you're like, man, if I would have had unlimited amounts of time, I sure would have hammered on this. Are there things you want to share? Hmm. There was a lot to leave out. Yes, like the, was. I mean, I, I love the story of Exodus as it is. And so I would have liked to talk about chapters 1 through 11, um, and <laughs> like, do for the next six uh, we months, did, we did, did do, do one, one and eleven, yeah. I think, but not I, in between. I touched on that, but yeah, there's there's just so many good things. I mean, there was a part when I was um, talking about um, even just looking at at 
God's judgment on, on Israel, whatever, it's like there was a blessing here. Like, don't don't miss that that God was was providing for Israel. Uh, I think even when um, Israel's family was was enslaved, like they kept growing. It's like that's God's blessing right there. And you know, there, I mean, that's a sermon right in itself that you are in the midst of trial, for in the sure. midst of oppression, and yet God is is blessing you, and your family's provided for even in the midst of hardships. And it's it's easy for us to see, oh, God's not there. Where is God? Because I'm suffering. And it's like God's right there. God's still there. Yeah. And so things like that, I I would have loved to touch on that. But again, we had like seven to ten minutes to, <laughs> to, to try to keep it keep it down. But I I mean I like I talked I touched upon um the Mara and you know, bitter and everything like that tie into Ruth. I thought that would have been really kind of fun. Um those are my main two that I would have loved to, to kind of dive into. Well, and, and certainly not everything has to tie into Ruth, but that first part is a, a real tangible example of God's invisible hand of providence. You know, he's providing mm-hmm. for them right then, even though it doesn't look like he's yeah. providing. So, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was my answer. But what you. about you, Wes? That's the only thing, only thing that you didn't talk about. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much symbolism in, in both 11 and 12. We mostly dived into 12, yeah. but, um, chapter 12. One of the things that I would have just loved to hit on a little bit more, which didn't, wasn't necessarily directly in uh, Exodus 11 and 12 directly, um, but I think it was important. I would have just loved to talk about repentance a little bit more. Um, we, we have this foundation in, in Jesus Christ. We have this, this firm foundation. We know that um, as a believer, once we put our faith in, in Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit um, come upon us. So J- God does all that change through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does all of that work. Um, we have the ability to, um, from then on, be able to to have this helper help us battle sin um, and and temptation. And in our response to that is is um, out, out of obedience is is to be repentant and partly be able to change the way we. Um, see ourselves before God, and that relationship is definitely in in uh, um, the the Exodus story of of Israel. As you, if we continued on the story, Israel uh, wasn't overly grateful uh, right away. <laughs> you um, you they, think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and they did did not act the ways they should, and and very quickly out of the gate. I mean, um, and and that's that's just how we are, and so forcing ourselves to be, be in a habit of of repentance. Um, seeing where where we are, God's done all the work. Jesus has done all of the covering, um, and I wish I would have had time to to pour into that, especially when we were talking about removing our lives of the sin. Uh, I just didn't get an opportunity to talk too much on um, well, we're still going to sin, unfortunately, and 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 what does that look like after? Wish I could have spent a little bit more time on that. Um, uh, another thing is there's just so much symbolism in. Uh, just the process of the meal, and mm-hmm. uh, we just didn't get to, we just get to, didn't get to spend a, a whole lot of, a whole lot of time on that. And then one thing we, you and I had discussed pretty heavily, uh, which actually was going to kind of be the original direction we went, and then then we didn't is is um, going back even just to the to the story of of Moses when he was born that Egypt was throwing all the Hebrews into the like. They were yeah. in a bitter, bitter place. Yeah. They were in a bad place. I mean, um, it's tough to know how many um, Hebrews, unfortunately, were murdered. Murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, during that, that process. But Again, not in the children's Bible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no, no, no. So um, that would have been, that was the original kind of direction where we were going to go. Um, but Yeah, because we were going to talk about um, how that's what Egypt did to Israel. And then God turned it around on Egypt and said, okay, we are going to, or I'm going to, as God saying, I'm going to, to inflict what you did on my people, but God made a way to escape it. Like Egypt, you had no way of escape, but with God, there is a way of escape. Yeah. And so we talked about that. And, and even with the blood on the door and, um, you know, Egypt could have, or put the blood on the door and they would have been saved by the lamb. They didn't know about it, but if they would have known about it and done it, they would have been saved because of the God that we serve. Um, but in the same way, if you are in the covenant family of, of Israel and you didn't trust God, then you were under judgment. And so that whole, you know, God creates a way out, even though the destroyer is coming, 
you know, whereas Egypt did not. And so there was some mercy we could have talked about, grace we could have talked yeah. about. You alluded to it super briefly as, as much as you could put mm-hmm. in there. But, but, but that to me, there's such application in a story like this in any story. Mm-hmm. And, and always whenever you guys ask me that question, hey, what do you leave out? It, it becomes application stuff. You're like, there's things where we should have really focused, hey, this is how we do this. So, and I appreciate this conversation so much because I haven't had a conversation like this with you. If you're leaving stuff out, that's application based. I think I almost always think, well, how's that going to impact adults? How's mm-hmm. that, that going to impact people who are raising children? You guys are raising young children. H- how do you have to change that, or, or what's your focus for thinking? How am I going to get a kid of whatever age, seven, eight, twelve? How, how am I going to get them to see there's things I can apply here too? Is that a part of the thought process for you? Because I know you desperately want to see kids apply mm-hmm. these things in their lives. How, how does that land for you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, to be fair, I mean, it's it's something, especially in children's, that I think of, uh, and, and our our team thinks of all the time. Yeah. Um, and a little bit to just call back. Part of it is is um, giving the opportunity, like in these family services, for us to come together mm-hmm. and be able to show those things that that hey. Um, I need, I need to, to, I need to worship the Lord too. I, I need to, um, you know, um, hopefully on a family Sunday, maybe we can bring communion in. Mm-hmm. Um, we talked about that. Um, okay. yeah. Um, but just, just showing that, that, Hey, I need to, um, come before the Lord and be right before the Lord. Um, and I need to repent. Yeah. And yeah. I do this not well either. And we're all in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, I think that's a, uh, a huge part of it, even when you look at uh, um, Jesus and his disciples, he, he gave them lots of opportunities that they often fell flat on their face, but it was giving them the opportunity for him to come alongside them, not just hoping these opportunities would come along. Like, I hope these disciples go out mm-hmm. and, and it's like, no, go out and do these things. Um, and so some of the overcoming that is just, hopefully we can just continue to give opportunities opportunities to, to do this, uh, and, and be an example. And then hopefully outside of here, um, we, we can be that example of, of honesty of like, Hey, I'm, 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 I'm a messed up sinful person too. And, and, and being able to, to not only have repentance, but, but also, um, ask forgiveness from those that we hurt. And oftentimes those people closest to us, um, I think all of those things are really important in, in being able to teach a kid. And those are the hard things for us to reproduce in, in Sunday school and sometimes on Sundays. Well, but that's why I think if kids are actually processing and thinking about that in their lives, I, I don't know that it, I want to make sure I say this the way that it's forming in my head. I think we preach to adults and say, well, you got to quit drinking or you got to quit cheating on your taxes or cheating mm-hmm. on your wife or whatever. And we think when an adult needs to hear that because they need to make that massive leap and could we have planted seeds with kids to say, you need to quit talking bad about your sister. You need, you know, yeah. Can we help them find ways to start practicing mm-hmm. dying to themselves, living for Christ, making tough decisions? Because, boy, those will make things eminently easier yeah. down the road when they're adults to go, no, I've got a pattern of checking in with the Lord, making a good decision, like a Christ-honoring decision. Yeah. And, and I, I think even parents who aren't Christ followers want kids to make good moral decisions. They want them to build mm-hmm. on that in their younger years. For those of us in the community of faith, we're trying to say, no, this is really important because you're not going to succeed on this on your own. You're going to need God to help you make these decisions. Why don't you start now when it is, I I, I treated my sister badly. Yeah. Yeah. The the hard part for me was like, I I just don't think about the kids context of teaching. Um, But I I know the heart of of the whole family Sunday was really. Yeah. But you think about pouring into your kids all the time because you're yeah. always using examples mm-hmm. of that. So I know you're doing it. You're just not thinking about it. Yeah. From the, the way Wesley does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's not my context, mm-hmm. but I think for me, it was more of like, well, if we talk about humility, if we talk about love, we talk about service, we can talk about those just generalities. Yeah. But my hope is that, you know, kids will ask their parents, Hey, pastor Brenton or pastor Wesley or pastor James or whoever said this, what does that mean in my life? And they'll ask their parents who should be the person listening right now. They will ask you and then you can then follow up and, and be Christ to your kids. What a great picture. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's the hope is that this, these conversations at, um, at church, you know, these sermons that we're preaching will give you conversations in your home with your kids so that you can disciple them and pray with them and, 
and dive into God's word together. That's, heard, that's the I've hope. I've heard Wesley say that so many times. That, that is, that's good stuff. Thank yeah. you guys. And then even thank you for me personally, that, that helps clarify a bunch of stuff. Lots of conversation there, but I, is there anything else before we move on that, that you guys wanted to address? Anything that you know didn't come from a question, anything that you felt you missed? Um, yeah, don't eat horseradish that's actually without funny anything that, else. That was our only submitted question. Yeah. <laughs> How much does Brenton love horseradish? Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. There actually was a second question. How much does Erlene hate horseradish? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I was, I was hurting pretty bad. And, uh, and my wife brought it up and she's like, all you had to eat was coffee and then two giant spoonfuls of horseradish. horseradish. And apparently it's not good for you. So yeah, that, that's all I want to say that I had nothing else. I just want to let you know, you sent, you know, what was left of that jar home with me and, yeah. and sparingly I put it on some chicken and loved it. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't need a spoonful. Oh man. <laughs> By itself. Yeah. <laughs> Nor do I ever want to do. <laughs> oh, I should have went with the saltines. I, sh- I should have, yeah. Well, that's apparently right. you already crushed that challenge. Yeah. Yes, you <laughs> I did. did. There, there are some uh, <laughs> children's <laughs> ministry and student ministry things that I've done. I mean, like I've swallowed a goldfish. I've done some things where you're like, I don't think this is a good idea. But yeah. <laughs> sometimes you get out ahead of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. This is going to be a great example. Yeah. No, I did make a little girl throw up. I, I, I was going to swallow the goldfish, and I literally had the goldfish swimming around in the glass, and I was just going to oh. drink it you know, and have it go down. But and I don't remember where somebody I didn't come up with this on my own. Somebody told me, "Hey, shave a little baby carrot in the <laughs> shape of a goldfish," and so I did, and I threw it in my mouth, and I, went, rah, rah, and I started oh. <laughs> ch- <laughs> chomping down on <laughs> this carrot, and I thought this girl in the front row there at Young Life Club was gonna oh, lose it, goodness. and I was like, "It's a carrot! It's a carrot!" I was trying to show her. Uh, thankfully, and, and then she looks at the glass. The goldfish is still in there, and I was redeemed. Oh, my and, goodness. And then I swallowed a live goldfish. So yeah. what? <laughs> and yet we try to skip over Passover. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the carnage of the goldfish. And let me tell you about this Passover story. <laughs> Just ridiculous. I would enjoy doing this the rest of the afternoon, but we're going to allow people to, to start to wind down. I, I do want to uh, tease next week. We will be back uh, studying the Book of Ruth again. We're heading into chapter four. Neat stuff. This is uh, obviously uh, Boaz had mentioned earlier to Ruth, there's a redeemer closer than him. And they're going to go through a little bit of mechanics to try and figure out if that works. And there's going to be giving away of shoes and things. So it's a a fun story. But, But the thing is we're dialing back into Ruth is to remember this points to a bigger picture. This points to the fact that we need a redeemer. Naomi and Ruth desperately needed a redeemer. Boaz was there. We as people desperately need mm-hmm. a redeemer. Jesus is there for us. Now, are there, are there two more messages or one more message? Two, two more messages. Two more yeah, messages. We'll, we'll do okay. the, the first part of, of Ruth 4 and then finish it up after that, right before the Thanksgiving holiday. And, and if everything works according to the plan that I think God is leading us to, we'll be ready to celebrate Thanksgiving together and then Christmas. And that is very, very exciting. That's on our, mm-hmm. our planning schedule for sure. Um, we normally do ask what we can be praying for. And I, I realized that I had said this a couple weeks ago, I gave a little update on my knee. And then I, I thought, well, I better come back. Uh, I am scheduled to have some knee surgery. It's not knee replacement surgery. Okay. It's a micro fracture surgery for my knee, uh, which takes longer to recover from <laughs> than, than total knee replacement. So for Thanksgiving and Christmas and into January, I will be on crutches here at OCC. You don't even get a scooter? Uh, no scooter. You're oh, six man. weeks total non-weight bearing Ooh. and then three or four partial after that to see how well you heal. Okay. So so all through the Christmas season, it'll be Pastor James on crutches up there on our brand new beautiful stage, which will hold even me and my crutches. So be praying for me on that. But be praying for us as a church as we move into that Advent season, as we wrap up Ruth. We, we appreciate the prayers so much. So yeah. it is a good, good thing to be with you guys. Thank you so much. That's all we got this week. We hope you enjoyed Midpoint, I would strongly encourage you, if you have any questions, any thoughts about the show or things that God's doing here, email those in, text those in, Podcast at lewistonocc.org, and make sure to join us. We have services on Sunday at 9 and 1030, and then our Monday night service. If you are not able to make it on Sunday, remember that Monday night service at 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. We hope to see you all very soon. Be well. Know that you are so loved by God and by Orchard Community Church. Amen. Amen. Yeah, we love you, OCC. See ya.